Welcome back. You're listening to The Keeping Your Money Show with Jamie Westenbarger. The decisions you make about your retirement will impact you for the next 20, 30, or even 40 years of your life. So don't leave anything to chance. Take the first step and get your complimentary financial roadmap from Jamie himself. This may prove to be the best 60 minutes you've ever invested in your financial future. Call to schedule your appointment now at 1-888-98-MONEY. That's one 888 Nine eight six 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 three nine, and now here are your hosts, Jamie Westenberger and Bart Steinler. All right, welcome back to Keeping Your Money Show. I'm Jamie Westenberger, joined by Bart Steinler. If you're just tuning in, we've been discussing college debt, social security, universal life policies, uh, blowing up. We, we've we've covered a wide gamut today, and we're going to finish with football. All right. Because it's almost football season. Coming up. Yep. So very rarely are we ever discussing the Detroit Lions without one of the following. One of them being busted for marijuana. One of them promising they're going to win a Super Bowl. Or them finishing 7-9 and nine when they should have made the playoffs. I mean, those are generally the three things that are, are discussed. So it was kind of neat to see an article discussing a Detroit Lions player. One who admittedly has probably kind of been a bust when it comes to his life as a player, but definitely not a bust when it comes to his life overall because of the fact that he has figured out intelligently from day one that this may not last forever and that getting a bunch of money to play a sport really puts you in a great position to prepare for the the rest of your life. And we're talking about Ryan Broyles, receiver for the Detroit Lions, recently told ESPN that even though he's made over $3 million, he and his wife live off of $60,000 per year because he wanted to make sure that the money set him up well for the rest of his life and he didn't want to blow it like so many people do, especially professional athletes. What a brilliant guy. Pretty simple concept. Simple, <laughs> live within your means. And what's the average length of a professional football player's career. Is it like four years? Yeah, it's like three to four years. Three to four years. So, yep. I mean, you got to figure if you are good enough to stay in the game and then you don't get injured, um, you can get three or four years out of that. And then after that, you have a long time. You're like in your mid-20s, maybe your late 20s, mm-hmm. and uh, you could be set for the rest of your life if you just live a conservative lifestyle He'll have money to invest in a business if he wants sure. to. He could go into another profession. He could live off, you know, he could reasonably just live off the uh, earnings from the investments if he can live on $60,000 a year and he's got $3 million. Well, and I, I think what's really interesting about this is, you know, he talks about the fact that he didn't really hold himself back. He figured in the first couple of months he would just kind of live his life mm-hmm. and then sit down and assess what did that cost to really live his life. And he realized it was a little bit more than maybe what he should have been spending. So then he adjusted it and figured out where they could pull back a little bit. Um, And then that established their budget, you know, and it's very common sense thing, but it's something that so few people do. You know, this really isn't any different than an average everyday person. And I think why this was such an important uh, thing to highlight is it doesn't matter how much you make every year. What matters is how much you spend. We have had people walk through our door that have never made more than $30,000 a year who have millions of dollars. And we have people walk through our door that make a half a million dollars a year that have twenty grand in an IRA. I mean, it, it, the, the, the earnings you have have very little to do. Granted, if you make more, you have the possibility to set aside more. I mean, Mr. Broyles has three million bucks. That definitely doesn't hurt his cause. But... He's still spending what he can afford to spend. And that's something that is really hard sometimes for people to wrap their mind around. Yeah. Um, We've had conversations with people who come in and they're making between a couple. They're making in the neighborhood of $100,000 a year. And they're telling us that they can't find any way to save money. And, and we start going over the details in their budget and, and all of a sudden the light bulb starts going off and, oh, oh. Oh, yeah, if I stop buying cappuccinos every day. And my, uh, my uh, truck payment is, you know, $650 a month. Well, 
I mean, what do you need a truck for? <laughs> right. Broyles talks about the fact that he still drives a Chevy Trailblazer he drove when he was in college. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Because you know what? It probably does what he needs it to do, you know? Right. Um, and, and this is the thing. And, and I think what I really liked about this was he pointed out something that we say a lot. This You don't have to live as a pauper, but you do have to decide what's important to you. You know, so if taking a really nice vacation is important to you, then that's fine. We figure it out in the budget, how you afford it. But you can't take a really nice vacation every year and drive a Mercedes and have a lake home and have a boat and have the nicest John Deere. And I mean, you can't do all of those things. So you need to pick and choose. There's got to be some priorities there. And one of those priorities has to be saving for retirement. And here's the kicker. If you're sitting there telling anyone that you can't save for retirement, then I'm going to give you a startling statistic you're not going to like. And that is you'll never, ever, ever, ever retire. And the reason is in retirement, even in the best case scenario, you're going to take a reduction in pay. Everyone that retires generally will take less money out of their investments than what they were making to start with. That's why they say you usually figure 70% of your previous earnings. Disability policies only pay you 60 or 70% of your previous earnings. So if you can't live on what you're making right now and make and set money aside from retirement, you can't even live in retirement, regardless of if you had any money set up. So you've just got to become more disciplined. I mean, there's no there's no other way around. You have to do it. It's not a it's not a like a like a you know a choice. I mean, you, you have to save. You find a lot of people that will not make a budget and will keep putting this off and putting this off, and then they all of a sudden come to the day of judgment, and it's not it's not a pretty picture. It's very stressful, not having money, not having enough money to be able to retire and live in retirement is not a happy way to live the last 20 or 30 years of your life. Well, you know, here's a perfect example. Sit down and look at right now what your social security payment will be. Mm -hmm. Figure it out. They, they send it to you every year or you can go online and look it up and get an account. Uh, figure out what that's going to be. Figure out what your spouse's is going to be and then try and live on that next year because that's what you're going to do. I mean, that's, that's literally what you're going to do if you don't set aside money. That's going to be your retirement. If you can't do it now, you think you're going to be able to do it 20 years from now when you have more medical expenses, when taxes are higher, when inflation has taken... I mean, it's just not, there's no way. So I, I, I'm not saying this to, to chastise anyone or anything like that, but just, a, I guess, kind of a wake-up call. That, that should make you really uncomfortable. You need to be real. Yeah, if you're 40 years old and you don't have a good chunk of money set aside, you better get your butt into a financial advisor and figure out what you need to do because you're already behind. If you're 50 and you're not pushing close to half a million bucks, you have problems. <laughs> so, you know, fix it. <laughs> fix it now. Don't be 70, you know, doing a job you hate with your back aching and your knees hurting and not enough money to pay for the pills you need because you didn't do something now to, to fix it uh, in the future. All right, coming up, we're going to wrap up the show and send you into the weekend right here on the Keeping Your Money Show. You're listening to the Keeping Your Money Show with Jamie Westenbarger and Bart Steinler. All right, welcome back to Keeping Your Money Show. I'm Jamie Westenbarger, joined, as always, by Bart Steinler. Great show in the books. If you missed any part of it or you're tuning in to listen to the next show, come back an hour earlier. Listen to the Keeping Your Money Show. We're here every week for a reason, and that reason is to cut through all the bulls, the booyahs, the bells, whistles, honks, and horns, to get you to the information that actually helps you move towards retirement. Sometimes we lecture. Sometimes we chastise. Sometimes we have to give you a little bit of a stern talking to. But overall, it's a pretty fun show. So Trying to just, have fun here. If you just tuned in the last segment, they're not always like that, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> we discussed uh, retirees being stung by universal life insurance policies. I want to urge you, if you have a policy issued in the 80s or 90s, please get that reviewed with a competent uh, investment advisor or financial advisor who can help you review that and make sure 
that you understand how that works. We also talked about social security mistakes that many women make, college debt, and how it can be especially dumb for parents. And then we discussed a Detroit Lions receiver who's living on sixty grand a year, even though he's made over $3 million. Just a great example of someone understanding how to live within their means so they can enjoy life in the future. And hopefully he's going to score some touchdowns this year. Hopefully he gets on the field. I don't think the guy's played. <laughs> but, um, it kind of made me sick when they said he made over $3 million, honestly. Uh, we've got uh, our event coming up at the Gravity Tap House, September 8th. It's our monthly mixer, 530 to 7.30 p.m. Event is casual and open house style. Complimentary hors d'oeuvres and beverages to RSVP. Give us a call, 888-98-MONEY is the number. We would love to have you out there. And then Bart, our annual baseball game at the Whitecap Stadium. Whitecaps baseball game Friday, September 4th versus the Fort Wayne Tin Caps. We still have a few tickets left. Give us a call or go to the Keeping Your Money website and click on the events tab. Gates open at 5.30. We're going to be having a barbecue dinner, 6.30 to 8.30. There's fireworks after the game, and the first pitch is at 7 p.m. Just give us a call. A few tickets left. We'd love to see you out there. Holler at us, and we'll tell you how you can qualify to come. Well, I'm going to tell you like I tell you every week. You'd never go on vacation without planning where you're going to go. You'd never just jump in the car and hop on the highway and hope you arrive at your intended destination. No one ever walks into an airport hoping to buy a ticket for the plane that's leaving in 20 minutes. And very, very rarely, and very rarely with good consequences, does someone show up at a hotel at 11 o'clock at night and hope they have rooms. Uh, it is the same thing with retirement, folks. So many times we hear people think that retirement is a destination. I've reached it. I hit 65. I hit 66. I hit 59, whatever it is. But in reality, that's just the beginning of another journey that's going to last you another 20, 30, even 40 years. The only way you can be prepared for that is to sit down and come up with a plan. We put that together for you in a roadmap for your retirement. And we would love to do one for you. No cost to meet with us. We'd love to sit down and talk to you. Give us a call, 888-98-MONEY, or email me, info at keepingyourmoney.com. I'm Jamie Westenbarger for Bart Steinler, Shannon Simon, and Troy Fox out on the lakeshore. This has been the Keeping Your Money Show. We'll see you next week. The opinions voiced in this program are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. To determine which investment or investments may be appropriate for you, consult with your attorney, accountant, financial advisor, or tax advisor prior to investing. Securities are offered in the U.S. through First Allied Securities, Inc., a registered broker-dealer, member FINRA SIPC. Advisory services offered through First Allied Advisory Services, Inc., a registered investment advisor. 